I have conducted the greatest survey of all time on the subject of flirting with and approaching women. Never before in world history has such an impactful and historic survey been done. Today, I share the results with you. We'll go over what I did and how it all went right after a quick word from our sponsor. Hey guys, Ashley here. Are you having trouble meeting the right girl? Are you struggling due to lack of confidence, not knowing what to say, or not having a plan? Are you tired of being told to act confident around women without being told how? If so, I'd like to introduce you to the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting book from David Sharp. If you are afraid to approach women in public, this book is for you. If you aren't having success meeting women on dating websites or apps, this book is for you. If you're having trouble connecting with women on dates, this book is for you. The Gentleman's Guide to Flirting has loads of modern, field-tested, and ready-to-use examples to help you confidently approach women and meet great women either in person or online. It also has practical, real-world advice to help you truly get the most out of the dating process. And it has thoughtful, practical advice for cultivating and sustaining your relationships for the long term. It's got it all, and you're going to love it. The book's website is gentlemansguidetoflirting.com. That's gentlemansguidetoflirting.com. You can go to gentlemansguidetoflirting.com and click the Buy Now button, or just search for Gentleman's Guide to Flirting by David Sharp on Amazon.com or anywhere else you buy your favorite books or eBooks, and start changing your life now. Hello there. Welcome to episode 49 of the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting podcast. I am David, author of the book of the same name, Gentleman's Guide to Flirting, available on Amazon.com and everywhere else you find your favorite books or ebooks worldwide. In this week's episode, I'm going to share results from a survey I conducted in support of the book. I started this survey in November of 2019 and completed it in April of 2020 after the COVID-19 pandemic started getting a lot worse early that year. I ran this survey to make sure I am giving you guys the best possible advice and the most accurate and complete information possible. The book isn't based on the survey results at all. I use the survey results as a check for myself as a sort of validation to make sure I was headed in the right direction and wasn't missing any key areas. The book has been in the works for years, really, but I started writing it in earnest meaning putting pen to paper, one sentence at a time on index cards in 2017. Now, I believe classics, classics are written very intentionally and thoughtfully, one or two sentences at a time, and that is exactly what I wanted to create for each of you, a life-changing and very impactful classic. I wanted to create something that would help improve cultures and societies around the world as the book, over time, gets in the hands of millions of men around the globe who want to do better. And I believe that has done one idea, one thought, one sentence at a time in a book like this one, The Gentleman's Guide to Flirting. So, in support of those soaring aspirations, those goals, I surveyed a large number of ladies who could arguably be considered among the very best in the world. I reached out to famous and accomplished ladies from a variety of fields and walks of life, including famous actresses from movies and television, Olympic gold medal winning athletes, and major national and international beauty contest winners. I did this because I thought obtaining a variety of perspectives from women who might be considered models of excellence, or maybe even unattainable, might be helpful for a lot of you guys. If I am being honest, I expected little to no response, but thankfully that isn't what happened. I am grateful that so many of them took the time to thoughtfully respond. Now, I didn't know any of them. I only knew I wanted input from some of the greatest and best and most accomplished women on the planet because I felt if I had that, I would have more validation that I was giving you the best advice and guidance possible. I just worked for months finding good candidates, reaching out to them, explaining what I was doing and why, and hoping for the best. 
the replies and advice that came back covered a wide range of takes on our subject. Now, I'll take you on a quick tour of some of the specific responses first, ones that stood out for one reason or another in my mind. Then later in the second half of this episode today, I'll talk about the results as a whole, as a data set, what stories that data tells for us all thanks to the input from these great ladies. This summary of broader themes is what you have in the book as special content or material after part one and before part two starts. The specific examples aren't in the book. I haven't spoken to anyone about them until now, until this podcast episode. So enjoy. Here are a few specific examples from the survey responses for you. First up, I asked a comedy writer for advice, and instead she came back to me with 10, yes, 10 actual pickup lines that she wrote and gave them to me. Now, they were a little too edgy to use in the book, but I'll share a couple here for you guys so you can get a sense of what her input was. Uh, First one was, Damn, baby, are you a broken vending machine? Because I want to bang you until I get what I want. So I think that one, I picked that one because it gives you a sense of why I did not put it in the book. I thought it was hilarious, but it's not something you ever want to say because it's that that implies violence and being pushy and forceful. And it's not aligned with the mindset of the book at all. Uh, Second one I'll mention from the set of 10 that she gave that she gave me was, damn, baby, are you a tectonic plate? Because you just rocked my world. Uh, she's just hilarious. I didn't end up, like I said, I didn't end up using any of those 10 because they weren't the right fit or tone or style or language for the book. Again, she's a comedian and was just being funny and trying to be helpful. I love the effort and appreciated her taking so much time to respond to me. Uh, next one that stood out was there's one actress that you all know. I won't, I'm not going to name any names here. One that I reached out to specifically because She's had her public ups and downs, but is also a beautiful work of art who has been dealing with men flirting with her her entire adult life. And I feel she's also a person who is just a pure artist to her very core. Uh, well, she she shared that she felt that flirting and approaching women is an energy exchange, in her words, an exchange of energy. She felt that people can feel your sincerity. That was part of her reply back to me. Now, that aligns with how we teach pure, naturally flowing honesty and integrity in the book. I also believe women, well, everyone really, men and women, can sense the confidence and positivity in you if it's real, if it's flowing from a real, genuine source, and you're not faking it and not just acting confident. You are confident. They can feel you have that integrity. They can see it. They can sense it in you without you saying a word. So that one really caught my eye in the responses. Plus, I really wanted her input and insights. Another actress that you all know who has come to fame in the past couple years had some practical advice for you in her response. Now, she talked about the specifically about the act of approaching women, that initial approach, but preferring that the guy not cares or, you know, not acting like he cares if the approach works or the lady engages in any way. Now, what does she mean? She suggested that men who were the most relaxed and the most casual on approach, who started with maybe like a light compliment, nothing too heavy, nothing too aggressive. They seem to do the best in her uh, view. The guy using that a relaxed, non-pushy approach. Well, the lady isn't forced to make a choice right then and there to say yes to go do something, yes to go dance, yes to give out her phone number or what what have you. Uh, She felt that the best bet, her recommendation to you guys was your best bet is to just always be yourself and be friendly and be genuine. That way, if the lady does respond to you, if she does show interest, then you could just be yourself with her. There's no act to continue Acting that way, that just shows your confidence in her opinion, showing that you are happy all by yourself. Uh, Meaning if she says no, if that's her answer, no, you just say, okay, have a great night and you move on. And she thinks that's hot. That's great. So her advice for your mindset when you go out is everyone goes out and they expect to meet someone and get a phone number and connect. But if you are truly enjoying yourself, people will feel that it radiates, radiates, radiate was the word that she used. That all, that entire sentiment aligns with the book exactly. 
Another lady known almost exclusively for her beauty and sex appeal made some good points that I want to share with you as well. She, in her response, she tried to bake bake it down into three things, three things that she finds the most appealing uh, about a guy. But number one was he has to really care, meaning he wants to do things that she wants to do because it'll make her happy. Just like conversely, she would do for him. That that was the first one. The second one was she insists that her, a guy must respect her as a woman because, you know, she feels she's an educated person and she's wonderful and she wants him to respect her. The third thing is that he has to like everything about her. Now, remember, she's special. She's known for her beauty and sex appeal. You know the name if I said it, but I'm, I'm not dropping names. I never will. But she felt like the guy has to like every part of her and that you have to like the silly her and the super sexy her the public facing sexy part of her the super smart her the nerdy her all the parts of her personality and she says if he if a guy does all that like if you're acting that way that's your kind of your part of your mindset then in her words he's quote unquote a keeper Another actress who hit superstardom some years ago that you all know, she offered this advice for you guys. She felt that being honest and open and kind and polite was great, but specifically she wanted to recommend that when you had for the, for that first date, for that first meeting, if you invite a girl out for lunch, it doesn't, it, something like that that's fairly lightweight during the daytime doesn't put her on the defensive because According to her, it's only a lunch after all, and it's not going to put her on edge compared to maybe like uh, meeting at night for dinner or drinks. Next example is a, a, a well-known stand-up female comedian. Um, she says the pickup lines are just uh, people, she just prefers the ones where people are just funny and you approach her like a normal human being and just strike up a normal conversation. That that was a very common thing across all the responses. And the last specific example I want to give you, uh, this, this, this actress, she had a few points I want to make. She gave me a really lengthy response here, but I'm just going to just go through a, a handful of the specific points she made. Uh, number one was don't pretend that you have it all together because uh, you know everyone's working on themselves everyone's trying to improve all the time that's a key foundational principle in the book it's no surprise there that's that was number one of her points number two she prefers men that don't pretend to be something that you that they weren't so that i think that's good advice don't pretend to be something that you aren't it's fine to be on an upward trajectory it's fine to be working towards your goals we all are doing that buddy uh th her third point was um, about giving her permission to be honest about who she is and it makes her know that you will accept her with all of her issues that was a very key important point for her. give give her permission to be honest about who she is where she doesn't have to be fake being perfect and that lets her know that you will accept her with all of her issues her fourth point was, don't put her on a pedestal. Now, remember, she's famous, she's beautiful, she's young, she's got all these great attributes, but she specifically pointed out, to, to share with you guys, don't put women on a pedestal because, like in her case, she felt she's going to fall off so hard and she finds it terrifying. So her suggestion is if you're honest about how you're working on stuff, then she feels like she can be honest with you about how she's working on stuff and developing and her goals. And she doesn't have to feel like you think she is some sort of weird goddess. And that was a direct quote from our weird goddess. Uh, fourth point is she tried to define a partner as someone who has your back, uh, someone who's supportive, someone who you would want, quote unquote, in your foxhole. Someone who, when they say for better or for worse, they actually mean it. And she closed with sometimes she has literally had dates where she's cried in bathrooms. So you being someone who sought out me, uh, who found me and you found the book and you found this podcast, you are not the type of man who has dates running off to restaurants crying. You're the type of man who has them excitedly calling their friends and telling their sisters and girlfriends and relatives, telling them about how great you are. All right, those were some great specific examples from the data set we got back from the survey. Now, here are some of the most common themes across all of the responses and feedback that we got from the survey. 
Number one, having a plan is good. Having a plan is good. There was strong support for the idea of a man being thoughtful and intentional about what's going to get a woman's attention. Number two, be honest. Be honest. One strongly recurring theme was that being honest helps build trust and helps her feel safe with you. The ladies surveyed point out it was important for people to be willing to be honest about who they were even from the very first conversation. They felt that if you can be honest about yourself, then the woman can feel safe being honest about herself. Sound familiar? Number three, be genuine and be yourself. Be genuine, be yourself. This came up in several forms. Basically, those surveyed said women aren't looking for a knight in shining armor or the best pickup line. They're just looking for someone who is genuine. Sentiment toward classic pickup lines was negative across the board. I mean, like cheesy, aggressive, pushy, slime bag piece pickup lines. That was all negative. They felt if you stay true to yourself, you will come across as much more confident. Number four, get to know her. Take the time to get to know her. Another strong theme throughout the process was that guys who stand out are the ones who are truly interested in getting to know the lady. It means don't get hung up on our appearance or our body or our figure or anything like that. Be interested in getting to know her because that's the thing that's really, really important. Sure, you're going to screen based on appearance no matter what, but you got to focus on what matters. They suggest not to just talking about yourself too much. The consensus was that it is best when the conversation is a back and forth where there's just two people getting to know each other like real adults. These ladies advised you to be open, bold, strong, and honest. Number five, fifth and last one, relax, be cool, and have fun. This theme ties the rest together. Here, they suggest that what works better in their dating experience have been the guys who have been the most relaxed and casual who said something funny or made a kind of a light compliment. They also suggest having a smile on your face, a genuine whole face smile, smile with your eyes. Basically, they recommended always just being yourself as well as being friendly and genuine. No surprises there, right? Note that not one woman surveyed, not one, said that they like being showered with praise. They don't want anyone to go on and on about how beautiful they are and Or, in other words, they don't want to be put on some sort of pedestal like we talked about earlier. A lot of men make this mistake on approach or early on in conversations. A light compliment is okay. That's fine. And you see that a lot in the examples in part two of the book. But you need to move beyond that fairly quickly like I show you in the 90 examples of spread across parts two, like I said, in in part three of the book. Part two is for in person and part three is for all... It's all about various online, like modern online dating situations. In closing, what you have here, what I've gotten for you and shared with you here, is the distilled wisdom from a group of some of the best ladies on the planet. It is advice straight from accomplished, famous, award-winning, top of their game, world stage, gold medalist level ladies at the top of their respective fields. If you prefer to picture it coming from a single kind of composite source, it is advice straight to you from the most brilliant, deep, creative, and beautiful superwoman imaginable. All right. I'll close by saying with great knowledge comes great responsibility. Use this powerful, hard to come by knowledge with care. Let's get after it out there. Let's go.